Hello. My name is Anthony. A Anthony Martik. I'm a psych... Well, the way I see it, former psychologist now at the Counseling Associate Center in Owensboro, Kentucky. I have played this introduction over the coming recordings. Maybe that way you can make sense out of all the... Of March, 2005. I've just finished a session with a man called Josh Torrenson. A former worker at Red Red, now trying to start up a new life in America. When Mr. Torrenson entered the room, I already noticed that he felt visibly uncomfortable. His eyes were constantly darting around the room even as we spoke about his... experiences. It seems that over the past weeks, he has been haunted by many dreams considering a place at his work. A room filled with large metal lockers to be exact. His story however was rather vague. Mr. Torrenson has talked about how whenever he would enter or leave the room, he would get a strong feeling of deja vu. Remarkable about this that he would, at least that's how he proclaimed it, get this feeling over and over again when he walked through the door. One day, however, was different. He, like so many other times before, went to get uh, something from the room, uh, I think pipes or metal or something that he needed for his work. When he went back, however, his mind went blank. He could only remember waking up in the hospital a few days after the incident. It's said that he was under the care of a division specialized in acute traumas. However, they were not able to understand how a healthy man like Josh was able to gain injuries of that size within the short period of just falling through a door. <laughs> Mr. Torrenson showed me injuries ranging from small scratches on his shoulder to a massive and surprisingly deep cut all the way from the side of his abdomen to the spine via the hip. The way I've seen it, he was indeed lucky to be alive. I asked Mr. Transon if there was anything he could remember about before or after he fell, or if there was anything he could fathom from the dreams he had about the locker room. He only looked at me and began to visibly shake stronger. I could see in his expression that something did seem to resonate. However, he was unable to give me clear answers. He was constantly talking about how the lockers were endless and that one passage led to the next. I made sure to give him some time to breathe in between questions and to not ask him too much at once. I, however, don't really know what to make of it yet. 4th of April, 2005 It has been a while since I've actively logged my experiences. The previous weeks have not yielded much since it was more of a test of my willpower to keep on digging through Mr. Transon's mind. As of current, my prognosis is that Mr. Transon is probably suffering from multiple personality disorder. There are some pieces of evidence that support my theory. First of all, Mr. Transon's mind went blank the moment he walked through the door, and he regained consciousness after he woke up in the hospital, with the damage already done to his body. This does correlate with people that suffer from MPD as their minds work in two different networks, meaning that each personality seems to use its own network of nerves that recall or suppress memories. In this case, Mr. Transon could be suppressing the events that happened after his fall. I've noticed that I'm going to have to use more drastic measures in order to find out what truly happened. Thus, I've decided to let Mr. Transon undergo a hypnotherapy session. I know that this might come with a huge risk, however, as hypnotized MPD patients can create different personalities that weren't there before or even have false memories implanted in their minds. I have to be cautious tomorrow. 5th of April, 2005. Alright, a successful day I'd say. On my way to the car and I'm glad to say that I've finally done it. The hypnotherapy session was a success. Mr. Transon was able to give me valuable information on the topic at hand. Although I must say that it... Uh, it was a lot different than expected. The information was still quite vague of course, but at least it gave me a more clear insight in his memories. I must say that these memories must be taken with a grain of salt as hypnosis can also cause hyperamnesia, if it's to be used for improving one's memory of past events at least. While in trance, Mr. Trenson was able to describe the events more clearly. He seemed to remember that when he left the room, he didn't actually fall. He stepped into what he called another locker room, one which seemed to be an exact copy of the previous uh, one in mirrored fashion. He tried to find other exits which were present, one which should have led to the bathroom, and another one which should have been a fire exit. Both, however, yielded the same result, another room filled with lockers. Panicking, Mr. Transon called out for his co-workers, and as far as he recalls, 
also for some reason tried to hide within a locker, which when opened also seemed to have led into another passage of the room. As said, take some of these experiences with a grain of salt, since I think it should be clear by now that not everything is 100% correct. He continued talking about how he constantly heard the sound of fluorescent lights above, accompanied by the rumbling of the ventilation shaft, and next to that, an unexplainable groaning sound in the distance. Sadly, Mr. Transom was unable to remember any more after that. Thus far, my diagnosis stands. Mr. Transom suffers from multiple personality disorder, and there is a high probability that the injury was caused by his own hand. The extensive bleeding and pain must have caused acute syncope, resulting in him fainting and only regaining consciousness after he was treated at the local hospital, and afterwards probably suffering from slight amnesia. It is unknown for how long he has been suffering from NPD prior to diagnosis. I will have a few more sessions with Mr. Transom in the future, but for now, that should be Where does this come from? Oh my god, my car! How? I don't even know where there could be a leakage here! I'm not kidding, the water is almost reaching my freaking abdomen! How many pipes have blown here that causes an entire lot to be underwater? Hey, wait a minute, where, where are the cars? You can't tell me they've all been pulled downstream. As a matter of fact, where is downstream? Why is there no stream downwards? I'm on the fourth floor. I mean, sure, unless of course the entire lot is flooded to the to this height. All right, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go downstairs. I'm sure someone needs to have an explanation for this. <sighs> just get this. <sighs> Jesus Christ! This door won't budge. <sighs> there we go. What? Possible. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm dr I I'm dreaming. I'm, I must be. Okay. I'm just gonna describe what I'm seeing here right now. So, either I'm really mistaking a door here right now, or there is another parking lot behind the door that should have led back to the stairways. Uh, I... <clears throat> Excuse me for a moment. 5th of April, 2005. Time unknown. I spent about, I think an hour or two by now, to find a way out of this place. But nothing. There is nothing. Even when I tried walking down, you know, oh, I can't even think straight, you know that stupid spiral that leads the cars out of the lot? I've ended up in other lots, and of course, you know, you'd think, yeah, of course, I was on the fourth floor, and when you go downwards, of course, third, first, but this the lot went up and down to impossible amounts. Like, this building should of course have a ground floor up until the 6th, but after walking for hours I've managed to reach floor minus 4 till 10. I've even called or tried to call out someone, but no response. Maybe it's also because of, you know, the hundreds of pipes that have blown here that drown out my calls, I don't know. I've even tried to call someone, but for some reason there is no connection here anymore. <sighs> Sorry, this is... This is... I, I can't even talk normally anymore. I mean, either this is a major prank of someone, or my mind is just... I don't know, maybe I'm just daydreaming, who knows. Just... <sighs> I've noticed that while there is a downward stream in the spiral constantly, the amount of the water on the different floors never seems to decrease. The pipes also never seem to run out of water. I mean, granted, I've been here for about two hours, or at least I think. So saying that isn't all too reliable at the moment. At least it gives me somewhat of an explanation where the cars might have gone. Although by now I can't really say more than down by this point. I don't know how the... There. Now you know my story. I, ca I can't believe I'm saying this, but 
Josh was right. He was right about all of it. I think I'm safe to say that I've spent multiple days now roaming this lot. I've found that over time this place starts to deteriorate in quality. Much quicker than it should even be possible. Pillars that start to lose chunks of their construction. Moss that starts to grow everywhere. Even the color on these orange and blue pillars, they've started to get a lot more pale. I've grown more and more desperate, and most of all, ashamed. I should have believed them more. I was too ignorant to believe it. But can you blame me? How am I as a psychologist supposed to support a clearly unwell patient that blabbers about stuff about an endless locker room where even the lockers themselves had passages through other rooms? Please. If anybody is playing this tape, that means that you are probably in the same predicament as I am. It also proves to me that more than just one person can enter this place. What is it you ask? I, I don't know. It's a place that both complements and defies reality. The emptiness. It feels as if I'm constantly being watched. However, nothing is ever there. All I can hear is the sound of rushing water from the pipes. That godforsaken sound. It's been driving me insane. I don't know if I'll ever be able to leave. But if everything fails, I hope this recording can still help others out there. This is what I know so far. It seems that this place's entrance could be anywhere. You can enter any abbreviation of it in seemingly abrupt and unexpected manners. Simply by turning a corner or in our case opening a door. The realms seem to be copying empty and mostly abandoned places that exert a feeling of deja vu. Although I must say, I haven't felt that feeling when walking through the lot. For me it was always more of a feeling of unease compared to canopsia or something like that, a feeling that is caused when traversing a place that is normally filled with life, but is now abandoned. On top of this, I've noticed that this place doesn't always abide the rules of nature. I've sometimes witnessed that water didn't ripple when it should, for instance when I was walking through it, or when drops of water coming from the pipes landed in the lot. The most noticeable fact is that I haven't even felt the need to eat or drink for the time I've been trapped in here, and trust me, it's been a while now. Also, yeah, that started happening a while ago. I've been running ever since. Please, if you find a way out here, take this recorder with you to the authorities. Let them hear what's on it, so at least others may have a higher chance of escaping this place. As I've seen with Josh, it seems that one loses almost all of their memory when they actually do manage to find a way out. I... I don't know how long I can outrun whatever that thing is, but I'm unsure whether it matters. I'm putting this recorder on a dry place so it doesn't get destroyed by the water. Luckily, some ledges are still dry. There truthfully is nothing more left for me than to hope. <laughs> I wish you luck. <laughs> I wish you the best of it. And I hope that you can- <laughs>